With the market picking up once again, there's no greater time to hop back into my favorite series. Firstly, talking about cases, we're going to talk about cases a decent amount because cases are in a really interesting position. Although we've started to see some pretty massive growth in other areas, cases have not yet seen that same growth, which is quite interesting when we look at unboxing numbers, we see that they're still at a very consistent amount at about a million per day. And when we look at the overall trends, we can see that cases are only decreasing. However, we haven't seen any major growth, which makes it a perfect time to look at them. SkinSwap is today's sponsor, and they're also sponsoring you with a free bonus for signing up with the first link in the description. They're the premier place for CSGO and Rust skins, with a massive trading site and a top-of-the-line marketplace, offering you the most competitive rates out there and a massive 40% bonus when you're using that link in the description. Combine that with their top-of-the-line selling feature with many payout options and their trading feature legitimately taking you just about a minute, and there's no reason not to sign up with that first link in the description. Now, for our $50 investment, today, I was realistically thinking about picking up some snakebite cases. However, I still think that they have definitely a little bit of room to drop a bit more, and potentially in the future they might be at a cheaper price, but the active duty cases are not something I'm going to invest into. Mostly, we're looking at the rare cases, and the rare cases are definitely in a very advantageous position, at least in my opinion. A lot of them are actually sitting at prices we saw a couple months ago. Look at the clutch and the danger zone case. Over the past couple months, we really haven't seen too much movement from these. Same with the Prisma 2, and a lot of these these other cheaper rare cases that are theoretically going to do very well in the future and just haven't seen that same growth right now because the hype is not in this area. However, today we're taking a little bit more of a risk. We're putting the majority of today's budget into one singular case and it's going to be one of these cases right here. It's either going to be the Revolver, one from the Gamma, one from the Spectrum, or one from the Chroma. We talked about these. These cases are on absolute fire when it comes to unboxing numbers and currently, in my opinion, I think there's one that stands out a little bit above the rest, which you'll have to wait and see which one it is. Is. Now the one area that's been absolutely exploding are the Paris Hollows, and if we want to look at this image right here, the ones that don't have alternatives, generally speaking, are starting to perform extremely well. We can look at a lot of them, like Fnatic and the Gamer Legion, which obviously got a new logo, and see that they're doing extremely well. Now it's not one for one, we can look at the Furia Hollow, it's got alternatives, but they do look a little bit different, and the Furia is a little bit different here, but it's still a very interesting predicament that the majority of the teams that are starting to do quite well don't have borderless alternatives, which is something we mentioned in a previous video and has come to light once again. Now the really interesting part about this is the fact that the ROI on these capsules is still so high. However, it seems that not enough people are unboxing it compared to the demand. And when we look at this right here, we can understand exactly why. If the sale goes to Monday, it will make it the longest CSGO capsule sale in history, provided that, and you've got the fact that it took almost a month for the sale to even start. The Paris Major ended in May, and now we're almost in September with no CS2 and Paris still in the shop, which is absolutely insane. Now with that being said, I do still think that there is a very strong potential for Paris to turn out well okay. Obviously, I'm not going to be investing into any of the Paris hollows. I think that's financially irresponsible just because of how expensive they are. It's not going to be the most likely area to get you a decent ROI, at least in my opinion, but I think when it comes to Paris, we're going to talk about it at the end of what investments I made today inside of it. However, what's even more interesting to that is it's not only Paris that has been exploding when it comes to stickers. Stockholm and Antwerp and RMR have all seen some pretty massive increases over the past couple of weeks. Now I'm going to focus in specifically on Stockholm and Antwerp here because these ones are super interesting. Although they started off as an extremely high price point compared to Paris, some of them have seen some pretty massive growth, especially within the past month of almost 30 to 50% as a capsule, which is absolutely insane for how expensive they already were. Now obviously we saw that big drop off when Paris was released, and a lot of people predicted that was going to be an overestimation or an over peak when it came to the overall longevity of these capsules, but I think it's very interesting that we're starting to see a rebound here, very similar to the amount of time we've started to see that Paris has started to explode. Soon as Paris started going up in price, we saw Antwerp and Stockholm go along with it in terms of the capsule, which is such an interesting trend. Now, as part of today's episode, we are going to either be picking up some Stockholm or Antwerp capsules, just because I think they're also in a pretty decently advantageous position at the moment. Now, although we're going to be picking up some Stockholm or Antwerp, the one area I highly suggest you avoid is RMR. If we want to look at the RMR hollows, they have been on an absolute tear. However, there's something interesting about them. Specifically looking right here, you can see that the reason the Furia hollow is increasing is because someone bought a ton of them, and that's not investments we want to make, is where we're investing into something where there's thousands upon thousands upon thousands of them out there, which RMR is, especially when we know someone just picked up a ton of them. My biggest concern when it comes to RMR is my anecdotal evidence of the fact that I have a storage unit with thousands of RMR stickers, and a lot 
lot of hollows. Because hollows were the purple rarity for RMR, thousands of them are out there. Combine that with the fact that RMR was the most bought capsule in history, and we've got a very good formula for these capsules to remain at a very low price for a very significant amount of time. Obviously, you're free to do what you want, but the fact that we don't even see the capsules increasing when we're seeing massive increases for the hollows, we see the ROI on these are not desirable, and I don't really think it's going to be a prime investment for you to make, but that's obviously just my opinion. Now, if you're a frequent watcher on my channel, you've probably heard me mention something called the indicator before, and the indicator is really interesting because it's up 25% in just the past couple of days. Now the indicator is something that I want you to take somewhat seriously but also realize it's the sticker capsule too. It's just basically showing us over the past couple of years when exactly the hype is going to happen and when we see a peak and the truth is it's actually been correct more times than it's been wrong and the fact that it's increasing quite significantly over the past couple of days is a very interesting predicament. Now coming to what I've bought I've got four different things. The first of which is the Paris Legends capsule. This one's got a couple decent things going for it at this point. It's got the Furia Hollow, the Fanatic Hollow, and it's also got a decent amount of hollows that have demand behind it. I like it in its current position, and the fact that the ROI is 95.5 when it was much lower in the previous months shows me that the interest in this area is heating up a little bit, and if they were to get removed over the next week or two, it could be a decent position to have. Second thing I picked up was about $10 worth of the Danger Zone case. I like the Danger Zone case because if we look at unboxing numbers, it's definitely got a strong supply there. Combine that with the fact that the Horizon is its only competition for the rare special item, and the Horizon's a little bit more expensive, unboxed a significant amount less, and I think the Danger Zone is in a very prime position once CS2 or the unboxing numbers pick up. People are going to opt for the Danger Zone case or the Prisma 2 or the Clutch, and we've got those ones as well. Third up on the list, worth about $8.40, is the Antwerp Challengers Capsule. Now this one I did for a very specific reason, and that's the Imperial Hollow. If we want to look at the Imperial Hollow, it is extremely expensive. It's one of the most expensive team logos from Antwerp, but the fact is, it's green, and the only other green hollow out there is Entropic, and I think these two do look a little bit different, enough different to the fact that people are going to prefer the Imperial Hollow in some situations, and therefore I thought it was a decent position to pick up because they didn't have any of those Antwerp capsules other than the 24 contenders we picked up in the very first episode. And lastly, over half of our budget was spent on the Revolver Case, and let me tell you why. Revolver Case is currently in a prime position to absolutely explode. The amount of supply for the Revolver Case out there is not massive. It's it's significantly less than the Spectrums, the Gammas, and the Chromas, but it's on par with the unboxing numbers of those ones. Combine that with the fact that the competition for the Revolver case really only relies on the Vanguard and the Phoenix, which are either more expensive or don't have a ton of supply out there as well, and I think the Revolver case is definitely one that has a very strong future ahead of it, especially when it comes to CS2 and people are looking to unbox those very expensive knives. That's all I got. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day.